and welcome. I am Kathleen and I am Ms. Artastic. And today, my lovely friend, we're going to be diving in on some watercolor painting techniques. And I will also be uh, letting you know how to grab a free printable um, technique download. Oh, I forgot to get that rid of that salt. Rub that off. Check it out. Look at that salt texture. Isn't that so cool? Okay, I'm gonna tell you how to grab this printable uh, watercolor technique template um, right after, well, the intro. And then um, I'm gonna show you how to use this and explore um, watercolor techniques for beginners. So let's get into it. <music> So if you're wondering how to get this fabulous um, watercolor painting technique template, so you can see, oh yeah, this one first. Um, we'll go over the basics first. Um, and I'll, these are just basic watercolor painting techniques that everyone needs to know. And then we're going to experiment with things that you probably already have in your house or classroom. So cool. Look at the, okay, wait, there we go. Look at that salt. Look at that, that's right there. That salt, isn't that so cool? I love it, I love it. Okay, so we're gonna dive in, check out these, and if you're wondering where to get this beautiful technique printable, um, it's free, it's 100% free. And right now, below the description of this video, there is a link there, um, and you can go to that link. It will take you um, to where you can download this. That's it. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. And then you can sign up and I will email it to you and you'll also get an instant download. So two ways just to make sure that you get it. Okay, instant download on this. So let's dive in on how to do and fill out this watercolor technique template for beginners. Let's get into it. All right, so once you print out your lovely pieces of paper, your lovely little um, technique templates. First, I highly suggest if you have access to getting cardstock, grab some cardstock and use that as your paper, okay? Um, if you want, you could uh, also print onto watercolor paper or if you don't have any of the above, just use the paper that you have. Um, just be mindful that if you put too much water, eventually it might disintegrate. All right, so if we're watercolor painting, we're gonna need some paint brushes. These both are um, watercolor brushes. There's also the option of using a bamboo brush. This is a natural hair on it. Mine is quite worn down. Um, they typically are a lot more, well, longer. There's a lot, usually more bristles, but it's natural hair, so after 10 years, it's worn down. Um, but also, these ones are synthetic, so there's this is a flat square brush, right? And we have a rounded brush as well. So we have two different types of brushes, um, and brushes, of course, come in all shapes or sizes. This is what I have, and therefore, that is what I'm using, because I'm a big believer in using what you got. All right, so all of these on here, the techniques that I've chosen to put on here are using easy to find mediums that you most likely already have. So we're gonna be doing wet on wet and wet on dry techniques for this, um, but also um, I'll show you how to do a wash so we don't need to get anything other than our watercolor paints and our dish of water and our paint brushes. Um, so all anything on this page can be done with just our watercolor paints essentially. And then on here, this is where we're experimenting with adding other mediums. So one is to add salt. So this is, I'm using coarse salt for mine. Um, you could use either alcohol. So when I say that, I mean isopropyl rubbing alcohol. Um, or you can also try lemon juice, okay? Uh, tissue paper, I cannot find tissue paper. Um, so I'm using paper towel, same idea. We'll, we'll explore with that. And resist painting using either uh, wax crayon or oil pastel. Um, you could also try putting liquid glue on and let it dry first, completely dry, and then paint on top. That will also make a resist. Um, however, I'm gonna be showing you and demoing with 
uh, oil pastel and wax crayon so you can see what it looks like and also I'm going to be using white so you can see what it looks like when we apply white as a resist method and then paint on top so you're going to see both of those happen. Alright we're going to start over here in just the basic skills. So we're going to do wet on wet painting first and I'm going to be painting a flower in this style. So wet on wet means that we are painting um, applying wet paint to wet paper so I'm going to instead of doing the whole thing wet I'm going to do areas wet and I'm actually going to paint a flower with water and I'm going to leave you're not going to see it yet because it's you'll see just shiny spots it's hard to see because well it's just water um but I want to paint a flower and I'm going to leave a little space between the different petals a little space of just paper that way it's going to keep my colors separate. It's a little bit tricky because I can't see it. Anyway, we're just going to do the best we can in this space we got. Okay, so I got a flower there, hopefully. And now we're doing wet on wet. So I have wet paper and now I'm going to apply my wet paint on top. So I'm going to start off with some of the petals and I'm just going to dab and I'm going to add paint and you're going to see it starts moving right away. It's an instantaneous effect and you can apply it two ways. You can do dabbing. I'm going to work along the edges of this one. So you can see it's almost marble like, right? Then it'll move on its own. Uh, for this, I'm going to try doing, you can see I have a bit of a bleed out there into the next petal. I'm going to work it, to let it move that way on its own. Since I have some paint in that one already, I'm going to skip it because I think I might add another color on top. I'm just going to add a few dots on this one just so you can see what happens. And here in this last petal, I'm going to do some lines. And then you can see the different effects. So I'm doing it, well, lots of different ways. But the purpose of the reason why my flower is going to be lots of different things going on is so that way you can see on, on the camera, on this video, you're going to see what happens in different each different one when I apply it in different ways and see how the medium is then moving and changing itself. Now, on yours, you can pick to choose what you're going to do, right? You can do the whole sample, right? And then pick one of these maybe or try a couple and see what happens. But I want you to see the possibilities and then from there, I would love for you to experiment. Okay, I'm going to do the center. I'm going to add some yellow and then I'm also going to add some yellow on top. Now, this is where watercolor gets interesting, right? So I can add other colors and layer it. And now this is something that we cannot do. Acrylic paint and oil paint is not going to do this, right? When we first make it happen. So we can achieve cool, almost gradient tie-dye effects doing this. So beautiful. And it's just water and just paint. Now I'm going to add some more colors into these petals and make them, well, they're going to have variety and it's also going to have unity because the same color is going to be used throughout all these lovely flower petals. And that way they're gonna match a little bit better now. Maybe I should add a little bit of blue to the center here. I'll just slowly dab the outside. Okay, so that's wet on wet. We can make some really cool effects with that. But now we're gonna do wet on dry. So I'm gonna paint a leaf with wet on dry, which means I'm gonna do wet paint on dry paper. And of course, we're gonna get a much more crisp line effect, okay? If I try drawing a line on wet paint, my line is going to, or so, yeah, on wet paper, my line's gonna go all over the place, right? It's gonna get very, it's gonna do its own thing, but we have more control when we do wet on dry paper. So if you're looking for a very controlled appearance, then wet on dry is what you're gonna use for whatever you need to use it for. So anything that you want to be crisp, that's what you use. Anything you want to have a beautiful, natural, fluid look, wet on dry, sorry, wet on wet is what you use. But now we're gonna do a wash and I'm gonna switch brushes. So I'm gonna switch to doing my lovely square brush and I'm gonna do a purple, wa a purple wash. And now I'm just gonna take my paint and I'm gonna do a fluid square. 
I'm gonna go back and forth and do a wash and make a nice background. And when we apply it all in one go, we can really blend out the colors and get a nice, even, solid background, okay? And this is great, especially if you wanna do lots of layering and then let it dry in between, then you'll get a nice, even background, okay? Versus coloring, like if I were to color with my pencil crayons or even my oil pastels, you're gonna see the texture lines from your the, those art mediums. Whereas if I do a nice wash with my watercolors, I'm gonna get a nice solid, even background. Okay, again, a lot different from, well, this is a very messy, crazy experimentation, but I want you to see the process. Not this finished product, but the possibilities of what you can do with the medium. Okay, we're gonna do a gradient. So I'm gonna apply water first with my gradient. And you can do a fade to white, you can do a fade to another color. I'm just gonna do a fade to white with this one. So I apply the water first, I'm gonna do wet on wet, and I'm gonna start off with that purple, and I'm gonna apply it to the top, and then I'm just gonna pull it down to make a nice gradient. I'm gonna add a little bit more at the top. And so we have a gradient of values. Over here, we're gonna do some, well, I'm just gonna apply colors and then I'll show you what happens. So I'm gonna do the salt first, I'm gonna do some blue. So I'm just gonna do a nice wash. I'll add a couple colors to it, just for funsies. Okay. And maybe I'll add some purple. All right, so we're gonna do salt. So what's gonna happen is I'm going to apply some salt and then we're gonna see right away that the salt is already manipulating the color. So you can see around the salt, different things are happening. It's drawing color in. And so when it dries, you're gonna rub it off and you're going to get a beautiful technique. So this one, you have to let it fully dry once it's done, you rub off that salt and you'll reveal a beautiful texture. So it's a great way to get texture on areas, um, especially in backgrounds or landscapes. Add a little bit of salt, let it dry, rub it off, boom, you got some texture. Okay, let's switch to another color because we wanna change things up here. And we're gonna explore the isopropyl alcohol. Okay, so I got my wash. Now I am going to drip on. Now this is my art medium. I use this just for art, so that is why I'm sticking my paintbrush in. <laughs> this one is not for my home. Okay, we're gonna drip it on, and you can see it's instantly maneuvering and manipulating that paint to get a really cool texture. Let's see if I can move it. There you go. See how that happens? We got different textures just by adding things. We got already got. Okay, another wash. Let's maybe do. Well, I haven't done black. Let's do black. Okay, we're gonna do the tissue paper. I don't have tissue paper, so I will be using a bit of paper towel. Now I bet you that really scratchy school paper towel that absorbs nothing and requires an entire roll to clean up a mess. I bet you that is perfect for this as well. Okay, I'm going to take it and I'm going to make it a blob that has lots of crazy edges, okay? I don't want it to look flat. I'm just gonna lift off the material to leave a texture. Okay, and finally we have resist painting. So I'm gonna do on this half some wax crayon lines. Now I'm just gonna do some wavy lines, but you can do this and draw all kinds of things with your wax crayons or oil pastels. And then um, when you paint over it, that's going to remain, right? It's kind of like a block, right? So wax crayon and oil pastel do an amazing job at resisting mediums. So when you go to paint over top, they suddenly become beautifully clear. Okay, we're gonna do black over here as well. 
And as you can see, it's resisting the paint immediately. And it's very obvious with the black. It works with every color, but it's just very obvious on film. And by film, I mean digital recording. <laughs> But you can see they they look very similar. Sometimes on the wax crayon you get areas where it doesn't fully resist. Uh, I find that you get a much more clear uh, area with the oil pastel, but essentially you're getting the same effect um, where the oil and wax don't mix with water, right? They're not friends, so they resist each other. Um, unfortunately, that friendship just didn't work out. They're too different and uh, they resist each other and make this beautiful effect. So you can apply that to an artwork, you can color it or draw something or design something first, color it with your wax crayons or oil pastels and paint on top to get a beautiful effect. Well, my friend, that's it for this episode. So make sure that you check it out. You can already see where this is starting to dry and making a beautiful, beautiful crystalline effect in there. I hope you download this. Again, the link will be below in the description of this YouTube video. You can grab it in an instant download, print it off, and explore some watercolor painting techniques that you can then apply to your own amazing artworks. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Please make sure that you hit that like button and subscribe to this channel so I can continue to make amazing art lessons for you. Oh yeah. Well, if you are an art educator or a teacher and you're looking for some cool art lessons for your classroom, no matter what kind of teacher you are, for any grade, check out the Ms. Artastic Teachers Pay Teachers store. There I have over 700 art lessons and of course it's always growing and transforming. So make sure you check it out frequently. But it's the Ms. Artastic Teachers Pay Teachers store and you're gonna find art lessons that are fully planned and easy to use. And you're gonna find some cool art activities to use for all the seasons all the holidays, and so much more. You're gonna find amazing art lessons that are integrating the seasons, the holidays, elements of art, principles of design, and art history, and so much more, my friends. It's a fabulous resource, so check it out. If you're looking for some awesome art ideas for your classroom, you can head on over to teacherspayteachers.com. In that search bar, just click it, and you can type in Ms. Artastic, same as this YouTube channel. There I am, you can click that, and that's gonna bring you to this page. And you can navigate it a variety of ways. You can go down, scroll, and see what's new. Um, these are usually my featured products that are usually brand new. Or if you go down to the side here, you're gonna find the categories of different things. You can click Artivity Books to find my art um, activity books that are fully integrated with the elements and principles. You can find artists and art history, art sub resources, back to school, Christmas, distance learning, and so much more principles of design. Here it's all organized for different themes or the holidays and seasons or types of learning, including sketchbooks and social emotional learning and all of the above. So make sure you check it out, Ms. Artastic on Teachers Pay Teachers, and thank you so much for watching. I'm Ms. Artastic, signing